Jeremiah chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. Before we go to the Lord's table, may the Lord, by his will, circumcise someone's heart in Jesus' name. Whatever had a heart, whatever fallow ground, be broken and be planted in Jesus' name. Are we there? I'm reading from New English translation. It says, Yes, the Lord has this to say to the people of Judah and Jerusalem. Like a farmer breaking up hard on plot ground, you must break your rebellious will and make a new beginning. I repeat, you must break your rebellious will and make a new beginning. Just as a farmer must clear away thorns, lest the seed is wasted. I repeat, lest the seed is wasted if the thorns are not cleared. For you, you must get rid of the sin that is ruining your lives. I repeat, you must get rid of the sin that is ruining your lives. Just as ritual circumcision cuts away the foreskin as an external symbol of dedication, dedicated covenant commitment, you must genuinely dedicate yourselves to the Lord and get rid of everything that hinders your commitment to me. People of Judah and Jerusalem, if you do not my anger will blaze up like a flaming fire against you that no, more, no one will be able to extinguish. That will happen because of the evil you have done. May God bless you. What did Jesus say? May God bless you. We are not talking about the people of Judah and Jerusalem. Say the word is talking to me. I want somebody along the way to hear it. Okay, the word is talking to us. Okay, pay attention. You know, when Jeremiah spoke and spoke and spoke and spoke, they didn't listen. That's how they went through what he said came to pass. We are not talking about the ground. Let us see, you are talking about the heart. Here, he said, they must stop all the rituals, all the ceremonial, whatever thing. And genuinely from their heart, turn to the Lord. This is uh, Mr. Atatu breaking up the heart on blood grounds of our hearts. Breaking up the heart on blood grounds of our hearts. If you look at the basic Bible English, it says that. Um, uh, it says, unworked land. That is for fallow ground. Then, easy English say, calls it hard ground. <laughs> International standard version says, unplowed ground. <laughs> King James calls it fallow ground. Is a hard unplugged ground. You see, later you are going to see that even a lazy farmer who plots or who plants seed in such ground will be sure to get no harvest. This is calling us, whether it's laziness or whatever thing, to break up the hard grounds of our hearts. Let the Spirit of God circumcise our hearts to be genuine in our service and worship to the living God. Fallow ground means land that had not been recently cultivated. It means ground not tilted, not plowed, not sown. I want you to imagine ground full of thorns. Pay attention. 
full of thorns, or a scrapyard. No a scrapyard, a junkyard. Or in some place they have what they call evil forest. People don't go there, they have all these big trees coming up here and there. White beast there. Sometimes go there and, and disappear. Ground, like red art like that. People have worked on it for a long time. I want to imagine that somebody is so lazy as a farmer. He goes there to plant seed. Pay attention. What do you expect of the seed planted there? Talk to me. What do you expect of the seed? Somebody is lazy. Whether it's a scrap yard, whether it's a place full of termites, you know, in some place you have termites eating up the whole ground. It goes here to plant the seed. Or even forest. You go there to plant the seed. What do you expect of the seed planted? Talk to me. Hello. Talk to me. Be honest. Let's be honest with ourselves. We are not thinking of people of Judah and Jerusalem. We are not thinking of Judah and Jerusalem. We are talking of ourselves. The ground is termite-prone. Not just one, uh, we are all over. Termites. Termites will eat up the seed, no matter the uh, quantity of seed you plant. Talk of even forest. The trees also, every day, will choke whatever there. You don't, you don't have weeds, they have trees already. They will choke everything there. No light to enter there because the trees are already overgrown. You talk of place with weeds. Weeds or stones. We choke whatever. Because I'm lazy, I refuse to clear the stones or the weeds or to prepare the ground or to till that fallow ground. I just plan because I'm lazy. I made wasted effort. Not only that the seed be wasted, I'll be hungry. Because not to harvest. Tamites, if it's a ground that's prone to tamite, tamite will eat everything. If it's the one at evil forest, not, not, if, if you manage to germinate, no light to die. Place full of thorns, thorns will choke. Place full of rocks, root will not go down. Junkyard, the same thing. The moisture that you just gather in a place, either part of that junk, to manage to germinate. Soon after, it will wither. That is the case of a lazy farmer. May God deliver us from ignorance and laziness in Jesus' name. What does this mean? That farmer is so ignorant of what it takes to farm a land or ground to produce. Or lazy to prepare the ground. The laziness and ignorance of the farmer will not change anything. To result in more problem for the farmer. There are many lazy farm farmers in the place of believers. But we're not talking about Judah and Jerusalem or inhabitants of Judah. We are talking of ourselves, lazy believers. We have unplugged ground, still so to plow, to prepare the ground, remove the weeds and everything. We still plant again the same ground, um, you know, and expect better harvest or any harvest. My father cohabited. That was the ground of my marriage. I could have it. And expect that God will be a blessing. Pay attention. 
So I need to relay the foundation, correct the mistakes. I do the same thing again because it's part of our family way of doing things. Whether in marriage, whether in business, it doesn't matter. Whether in spiritual life, whether in studies, the way a parent did them, if they are not right, it's your duty to make them right. Don't plant on the same soil that's hardened. The same soil, the same ground. People have worked on it, it's so hardened. What do you expect? You want your life to change? You must have a new foundation. In whatever you do, everything has a foundation. Your heart may be hardened, no, you are allowed to be hardened. If you look at that, I say that if people do not do that, God is the one that will do the judgment, not the pastor, not any person. Soon after Jeremiah won and they didn't listen, judgment came. And nothing stopped government, judgment of God from coming to the people of uh, Judah and Jerusalem. How are you rebuilding the, you know, the foundation that you inherited or found yourself? Financial life and family? Book of Psalm 11 verse 3 says, if foundations are destroyed, what would the right choice do? You are that person the Bible referring to. What are you supposed to do? Do you build on the 40 foundation or you call the 40 foundation to build for it to last? It is likened to you as a lazy farmer. Planting. We have termites. We have thorns. We have rocks. No soil for that to, you know, uh, to take root. Or junkyard. If you are such Christian, may the Lord show mercy and deliver in Jesus' name. As we go into the Lord's table, let there be such a pressure in our own hearts. That we are not saying, I'm, I'm too hard. I'm hardened. It cannot help any person. I'm too hard. No person can change me. I had somebody say, if God will come down from heaven, I will not do it. When God comes down, where will, how will you be? If God comes down from heaven, just angel of God came down from heaven when Jesus resurrected. All the soldiers fell as dead. Angel, not God, though. To show I understand who God is. When the word of God came to King Ahab and household, remember the day Jezebel died, she was doing what? Jehu came up. When he came up, what happened? She was pushed from there, from the window. She fell. The makeup did not save her. Witchcraft did not save her. Jehu and the troop went. When they knew what we are doing, oh, that was daughter of a, 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 of a king. Let's go and check her. By the time they went down, what happened? What happened? Dogs are eating. Fulfilling the word that said, they shall not be said, this here lies a place where they buried her. Dogs ate her. Her witchcraft, her wickedness, her evil did not save her. Because she refused to hear and obey the word of God. If you hate such ground, you must have a different approach. Your laziness, your ignorance as a farmer, Planting on such ground will not make things better. To make things worse for the farmer. The seed be wasted. 
That's why I read it from this uh, New English translation. Let me go again to verse 3. It says, Yes, the Lord has this to say to the people of Judah and Jerusalem. Like a farmer breaking up hard on plowed ground. You must break your rebellious will and make a new beginning. Say, I'll make a new beginning. Say it loud. I'll make a new beginning. Not in the place of termite. Are you hearing me? Not in the place of junkyard. Not the place of you know, scraps. Or even forest. Or all those places where for sure they will choke the seed and whatever. I'll make a new beginning. Just as a farmer must clear away tons, lest the seed is wasted. Say, I must clear away. Say it as you mean it. Tons, tons, lest the seed be wasted. You see, you must get rid of the sin that is ruining your lives. Say, I must get rid. Read of the sin that is ruining my life. It's not ruining God's life. It's ruining the life of the sinner. Bible said that wages of sin is what? Prosperity. What is it? Wages of sin is what? Long life. Wages of sin is what? Say it loud. No, if you mean it, say it loud. Wages of sin is death. It's the word of God. It's not the word of the pastor. When they were so hardened, they could not be moved. God sent his ego from Babylon. He came and destroyed them. What they treasured so much, they were carted away. They were taken to captivity. They suffered. You know, it's not like today you can uh, maybe enter a vehicle. I believe they walked thousands of kilometers on foot, maybe chain and all those things. And they did not see their father's land again because they refused to heed the word of the Lord. What is that fallow ground you must break up in your life, in your business, in your marriage, in your studies? Everything you do in life has a foundation. What foundation have you built? What is, you know you are building? If it's any of those places, they will surely collapse. It's just a question of time. It's disaster in the making. Your ignorance, your laziness, does not help matters. Young, old, male, female, educated, not educated, does not have matters. Ask about those children in the days of um, Jeremiah. That's a lamentation. You note that children were smashed against the wall. Is that Bible? Is that Bible? Pregnant women, they cut blue. They spear no one. God, the word came and won and won and won. When Jeremiah spoke, they said, let's kill this man. All those that said, let's kill him, they did not survive. Even though they put him in the world, he still survived. Because God spoke to somebody. Abimelech was used to bring Jeremiah out of the pit. And the people that came, the invaders came, oh, no, no, please, spare this man, kill this man, oh, no, take care of this man. He didn't know. God spoke to the people. God told the heart of those people. And more powerful than God, and too powerful than God, wait on the true God shows up. When the true God shows up, you melt like white before the fire. When true God shows up, maybe there are gods you can be a powerful. When true God shows up, you can't even stand to start with. You evaporate. What are the fellow grounds you need to break up? Let's go to the book of um, um, Matthew. Follow of your business. Your business not according to the way it's supposed to be done. 
Don't expect anything better. It's just a question of time. Disaster in the making. Matthew chapter 13, verse eight, 4 to 8. And verse 22. Matthew chapter 13, 4 to 8. And as he sowed, that's Jesus speaking, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil. They sprang up quickly because the soil was not deep. But when the sun came up, they were scorched, and because they did not have sufficient roots, they withered. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and they grew up and choked them. But other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundred times, a hundredfold, as much, and sixty and thirtyfold. Verse 22. The seed sown among thorns is the person who hears the word, but worldly cares and the seductiveness of wealth choke the word, so it produces nothing. What category is your heart condition? Or the soul of your, of your heart? There is need for us to break up our fellow grounds. Because the condition is not favorable for planting of God's word. Get rid of your rituals and idols. In those days, they still go to shrines. They go to uh, this um, fertility God shrines. They still come to worship God and sacrifice. When I first come to church, you see, go to shrines, see, go to prophets, see, go to cover evil altars. Double standards will not help you in the world we are in. Break up your fellow ground. You must let the environment be conducive for godly living in your life, in your business, in your studies, in the office, wherever. There is need to break up the hardened hearts and remove wrongdoings from our lives. I repeat, there is need for us to break up our hardened hearts and remove wrongdoings from our lives. Those things that choke God's word in our own lives, those things that provoke God to anger, we must stop them before it is too late. I repeat. Those things that choke God's word in our own lives, those things that provoke God's anger in our lives and our family, must be stopped before it is too late. I repeat, must be stopped before it is too late. Just as a farmer will break up the hard ground and remove the weeds, remove all those that will choke the seed. Before planting, we must follow suit. Inward change is necessary. Genuine and inward change is necessary. Inward and genuine change, not on the surface, not out of ceremony, is needed. As a trust ceremony without repentance will bring God's judgment. Whether for the family, whether for the nation, whether for individual, whether for community. And if you look at verse 4, it speaks of judgment and destruction. That's divine judgment. They are for us to use the plot of true repentance. The plot of true and genuine repentance must be deep into the ground. The plot of the repent and genuine repentance will go deep to the ground, or else our laziness, our ignorance may cost us more. One, 
to cause the lazy farmer or ignorant farmer wasted seed, no harvest, wasted effort, hunger. He may even die before the time. There may not be to help the farmer, to support the farmer because of ignorance or being lazy. Don't be such a lazy Christian. Tell anybody, don't be a lazy Christian. For the youth, there is no excuse for them not to do away with what provoked God to anger. For the children, no excuse. For mothers, fathers, pastors, those online, there is no excuse. God's standards stand forever. I cannot change because of any person. It can't change because of any family. The word of God cannot be broken. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Break up the fallow ground of your hearts. You can be religious, it cannot save you. You can be clever, it cannot save you. Time shall come when everything be exposed before God and man. There shall be no time to say, God, I'm sorry. The world we are in today, God, for to be more, clear, more, 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 more careful and even come to God, even. More than ever before. Look at, okay, look at yesterday, the rain that fell yesterday. Unannounced, unexpected. Look at the result. That's life. That's why I don't think I have tomorrow. The time you have it now, you don't have tomorrow. You don't have the next one hour. Tell anybody, I have no one hour. I don't have tomorrow. I don't have tomorrow. God controls tomorrow. Are you hearing me? What you have is now. What you have is now. Hardness of heart can put you where you never expected. Let's stand up. May God help us in Jesus' name. As go to the Lord's table, we pray that there will be surgical operation in our own hearts. Whatever mounted our will melt in our hearts, in our lives. Whatever that will be cut off, cut off. Whatever so that we are not destroyed with the world. That's the purpose. Is that a threat? No, it's just common uh, advice. It's the word of God. It may be hard. It's, it will save somebody for those that have ears. When each time Jesus speaks, he said, those who have ears, then you know what? Hear. For those that have hearing ears, all of us have ears. But some, when they hear, he enters here and goes through the other side. Let it enter from here. Enter here, go down this place. Are you hearing me? That would make the difference. Without that one, you expect God to show that He's God. Are you building on the foundation or altars? You are praying that did not know God. Build. I believe on the foundation your mother built. Your mother did not go, go, know God. Your grandmother did not know God. Your father did not know God. I don't think there's wisdom in that one. Okay. Your cleverness. Remember, I didn't say hate them. When what they did are not according to the Bible. If they are not on God's foundation, he must be wise enough to say no. I must not perish with them. You must be wise enough. Thank God, I mean, of us are, you know, of age. There's no excuse. Run the race to win and not to participate. But when the time comes, there will be no mercy. If you have no lamentation before, go and lamentation. What Jeremiah had and saw, he cried. The enemy did not spare the pregnant women, young, male, female. Young girls up to age of marriage, no one was spared. Because when they were warned, they did not listen. And they were wasted. You shall not be wasted in the name of Jesus Christ. The word of God will be afraid in your own life. The word of God will be afraid in your own life in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not be like Jezebel. Who was destroyed? They will not say this. We are the buried Jezebel. What of God came to pass? 
Whether I believe in God or not, what does God come to pass? Bible says, a fool says there is no God. I'm only a fool. If I hear, I don't do. May you not be a fool in Jesus' name. They are watching, they are hearing the word of God. It's never too late. Tell them, never too late. Start somewhere. Today is the day of a new beginning. That's what you read. Starting afresh. Today is that day. Start afresh. According to the standard of God. According to the standard of holiness. Standard of righteous foundation. Whether in your business, in marriage, in studies, whatever. You see some of students, when they go to the classroom, they, don't read, they go to they don't read. Parents pay a lot of money for them to be in, in school. They are, they are hoping that they are going to do either giraffe. You know giraffe? You know giraffe? Okay. okay. It's not a laughing You know why it's not a laughing matter? It's a foundation. It's a evil seed. Or, you know, there are some, they've seen, they, because today it's an you know, IT world. They put it, whatever, whatever. They know how to put it. Or even some of them, someday they put it here. When, if you let them somewhere there, these are evil foundations. You expect to prosper in the future. There are many of us who take people's wives. You are wonderful. You are powerful. Tell them you are very powerful. Is someone who does your wife or your daughter will like it? Answer me. Talk to me. Hello. Someone who does your daughter or your wife, hey, I congratulate you for what you have done. It shows how wicked and how ignorant you are. You are stealing. You are preferring. If someone steals your own, will you like it? Break up your fellow ground. You are taking someone who has a husband. You are powerful. You are too smart. Judgment is coming. In the world of today, people are trying to correct the mistakes of our fathers. We are still committing the same thing. You are not wise. You are lazy. Break up your fellow ground. After church, you go to prophet. Church, you go to Nanga. Pro church, you go wherever. Keep on going. King Saul did not come back. He thought he was clever. When he was in you know, uh, fellowship with God, he dealt with all those people. When he fell out with God due to disobedience, he went and disguised himself. You can disguise yourself. Thank God that God is important and present in Jesus' name. Yes. You can disguise yourself. can be anyhow. God will show you and expose you.